Thank you for tuning in to Androna Talks Radio. Gathering as one in our sovereign truth from a galactic perspective. Exploring our world with new ideas, knowledge and a promise of a better future. Galactic discussions for galactic minded people. Androna Talks. And thank you for joining us today on Andrana Talks Radio. And I will be talking to Chris again today for another update regarding the yellow vests and some other issues regarding the cathedral that um, you may or may not be aware of. So we're just going to get right into it. Uh, Chris is here, and here goes the update. Hello, Chris. How are you? I'm great. Hi, Jess. No, I'm great. I'm great. Very happy to be able to uh, to talk to you today. I guess there's a lot of information to give. Some of might be more going a little deeper in some of the information I gave earlier, you know, in the early report. But, you know, every week we discover a little bit more um, on what's really going on. So it's interesting. Well, let's get right into it then. I know that you've been uh, following up and researching some things. And you started to tell me a little bit about the cathedral and uh, the number seven. We, we deal a lot with multiple numbers, you know, sequences of the same number. Um, I dealt with uh, the multiple fives in uh, the Andronicus transmissions. Um, we, uh, in, in the whole thing with the super soldiers, it was the agenda of eights. So here is uh, the sevens, All right? So go for it. All right, so I mean, yeah, there's a lot to talk about uh, Notre Dame. Um, so obviously, I was explaining in the earlier reports that obviously, uh, you know, an hour after, well, while the, the cathedral was still burning, the narrative everywhere was that, of course, it was an accident from the people working on the Notre Dame Cathedral, right? Which was already a big red flag for most of the people at least wait for the cathedral to burn down and then at least, you know, do an investigation properly. And that will give you at least a good, you know, good, <clears throat> good idea what's going on, but that was never the case. So a lot of um, people in France start to look into, from, from different uh, type of expertise, uh, field of expertise, start to look into that whole thing. And it, of course, you need, they needed a, a few weeks to let pretty much things settle and um, go deeper into what's really going on. So when I'm talking about Yellow Vest, I'm talking about just French people, some Yellow Vest, some not, some are experts into that type of uh, situation of renovations. Um, we have uh, some journalists, we had some people that have been part of the Freemasons that left before they could even, you know, when they start realizing what was really going on there. I mean, all kind of different backgrounds. But the way I work is I never listen to just one person. I go across the board of different, you know, um, what, I, what feels legit to me. And then I see what makes sense and where there are some connections. You know, uh, I just don't believe one person. Um, let it cool down a little bit and see what my higher self is pretty much, you know, uh, asking me to to talk about. Well, on the 15th of April 2019, it was 777 years that a specific event happened on that very same place in Paris, which we call the Parvis, which is what's that, that big place in front of Notre Dame. In 1242 AD, the French people of that time burned hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Talmuds, which is the oral part of information received, supposedly, um, that Moses received when he received the 
the written part of information supposedly from God, that's the, 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 the Ten Commandments, and the verbal one, it's the Talmud. And I would say some say it's satanic, it's dark, it's, you know, uh, there's a lot of information about that that goes in that direction. But anyway, it was interesting that in France, um, in the 1242, the French church, I'm pretty sure, and the French people burnt a pile of them saying that these books were literally satanic. So we know that those who are orchestrating most of the events happening in this world, um, you know, all these different attacks and different events happening this last few years, we start to discover that they have a modus operandi that's pretty much the same, they're not very creative. Um, after a few of them, you start to see the pattern and the blueprint. And here in this case, they start to look at the dates and they realize that, of course, several events happened uh, throughout history uh, on that specific you know, month of April, specifically because it's before, it's, it was during the um, Holy Week and just before Easter. Now, I'm not talking Christian religion here. Those dates are also for different religions. They have they celebrated for uh, each of these religions are ce celebrating it. Muslims include it. Just call it differently. Yeah, the and it's also are, known as the Os Os Ostara or Ish. Uh, yeah, related to the Ishtar mm -hmm. celebration. Right. So this is all this time, right? Just um, Christians have used pretty much the pagans. Uh, celebration and just change the name, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Correct. That's it. So we know that the people in charge, I would say the dark forces, the, the, the dark control system that are behind everything and deep into the layers behind everything that's happening in the world, control the world, what I would call also the inorganic control system has its roots, of course, in higher dimension, but I will talk first on this dimension. So, 777 years later, after that event that happened in 1242 in, um, in Paris, in front of the cathedral, when they burn all these Talmuds, well, guess what? Cathedral Notre Dame, which is the heart, the symbol, the world symbol of the Christian religion, the roof is burning. Articles were written in some newspaper about rabbis saying, well, you know, it's a vengeance. It's a vengeance of what happened in 1242. Now, people might say, well, that might be just the opinion of one person. Doesn't mean a lot. Well, it doesn't mean a lot until you start looking to the numbers. You have to understand that the, the Kabbalistic, all these people can be, you know, the Freemasons, all the people that are following all these mystery schools, type of teaching that can be taught in different um, secret organizations, loves symbols and numbers. It's very important for them. So 777, it seems to be connected also to the, the belief of the birth of the Jewish religion. So I, I, I pretty much uh, encourage the listeners to make their own research on that because of course don't just believe what I'm saying do your own research and you will find you know what the symbolic of 777 for the Jewish faith for the Catholic faith for the Muslim faith and you will see each of them have their own interpretation but here focus on the Jewish faith and before I go further I want to make sure that people understand here listen and understand here that I am not supporting one religion on another or blaming an engine, a religion on another. I'm just talking about what's happening, knowing that all these religions, most, uh, all of them pretty much are used to control the people and we know the roots of those religions. I'm more interested about that, which are not from this dimension, of course, but there are control systems. So it's more, of the, more on these terms that I'm explaining this here. The second thing is, um, at the same time, uh, we have the investigation start, you know, a week or two into the investigation. They have found something incredible, the cause of the fire. We have it. They found four types of cigarettes. 
in Notre Dame. And that is it. So, <laughs> I'm joking, of course, but this is really what the, the, the report says, that the, so what started the, the, the fire... The cathedral, the, the very ancient cathedral was taken down by a few cigarettes. Yes, which yeah. is by experts two days after the burning of the, you know, the, 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 the blaze of uh, Notre Dame, they, I guess, by mistake, had a few experts, meaning people that have, and I'm not talking one, I'm talking two or three of them that are, it's their field of expertise, they're, they're international experts in that type of renovation and the type of security that normally they have the standard security are very high for that type of uh, um, monument because it's, um, I don't know, I said that in, in English, I think it's Patrimoine de l'UNESCO. It's a, it's a building that's protected. Right. In the world, right? Like uh, the Pyramid of Gizi and, and so on. So, I yeah. mean, when you touch that building, you just, you know, you're not going to ask MacGyver to do that job. Of course, no. you want some experts. So, they were saying it is impossible for any accident to happen there and create a fire. Impossible. We have thought of everything that's possible, to, and, and, and every option, but, and I mean, there are so much level of security, it is impossible. And by the way, might as well burn uh, iron or steel because that's what this timber of the forest, the, or the, 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 the structure, the wooden structure of the roof is literally 850 years old oak. It's like steel, impossible. To right, make. Like, almost like petrified wood. Oh yeah, electric, no electricals at all. And yeah. the roof, zero electricals alarm system everywhere i mean so there were some so now of course the news were saying all right so they have interviewed all the workers and some workers said yes we have smoked which have well, no proof of that of what the news is saying and of course the whole fire started because of four cigarettes that were not obviously um properly um i would say um uh let off no, I say that correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, it is the same as when you had the um, terrorist attack of Charlie. You know, Charlie, the newspaper Charlie in Paris. Well, the 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 guy that did that, uh, did those killings, left his driving license on the windshield of his car. You see, I mean, there's a point like, where yeah, like it was the, like yeah, we're gonna make sure that it's there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it, there's a point, and, and the guy was saying, you know, one of the guys was listening to, you know, they, they, they don't hide anymore, and they know, they, it's much much a game for them, they know that people are sheep for them, they're so asleep, the bigger the lie, the better it is for them, and, and the more laughable it is to see people believing in it. So, of course, now it is not happening the same way. A lot of people are like, okay, you took us for idiot the first time. We were in shock. We get it. And then, you know, we had the Bataclan in Paris, 213 dead. There's so many different events. But this now is getting a little too much. So, of course, um, there is something else that came out is that, well, and of course, they needed to do the renovation. As I said earlier, there was no, uh, in another show, there was no insurance really for that, uh, for that cathedral. It's, I mean, it's the value, is, <laughs> there's no number, so that the value of that cathedral. So it's impossible pretty much to insure it. So the state of France was responsible of it in fighting with the Vatican to figure out who would be the one paying the bill for the renovation. The renovation is 100, was 100 million. It should have been 500, but nobody really had the money. I wanted to put the money. So now that that cathedral burned, there is a billion dollar. 500 million will be going for the restoration. And they have few plans. We discovered that in 2000, people have, not we, but people have discovered that in 2016, there were some um, projects uh, already uh, in place for the cathedral. And one of them would be and we see several of them where the cathedral has no roof. There is a flat roof that will be like a garden when people can go up and walk around. That means it is not a religious symbol anymore. It's become a touristic, non-religious yeah. yeah. building. And around the cathedral, 
they wanted to to to, to create a whole um, new real estate that would be commercial um, with some malls and all that, right? So it is impossible to do that. Just like that, hey guys, we're gonna destroy the roof and eventually we're gonna do something that's more touristic. You don't mind? They know a lot of people would be pissed about that. That's a symbol. So that is what they discovered. So that, that they had already be... planned it, you know, similar yeah. to you yeah. see these early projects, blueprints of things that mm -hmm. that they're already planned, and so then, you know, ironically there's an accident of some sort and then they, they can yeah you know, follow through with the original plans without any uh, suspicions. So exactly. I can I backtrack a bit and ask sure. uh, what was the reason why all those Talmuds were burnt? Um, I know they've done book burning throughout history and uh, was uh, what was going on at that time period in France? Well, the, the time of the Crusades Right. It's the Crusades. So, okay, so yeah. anything that was not Christian Everything was Christian. was seen as uh, okay. As evil, and and of course, yeah. of course, the Talmud. If you you know, um, I've seen a few documentaries about that because I, I, I didn't know anything about it, but then I start to research a little bit more, and then I realize, and and I talk to some 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 people that have Jewish faith, and they tell me, yeah, Talmud is it's pretty hardcore, because they pretty much say that anything that is not Jewish is anything, um, sorry, anything that is not of Jewish faith uh, is automatically less than a dog. Then we can rape the woman and all that stuff. So this is what some people say that the Talmud talks about. It's very satanic, very dark, and it has a very strong agenda that's that's pretty much the agenda that most of these Kabbalistic and Zionists are using. And when I say yeah. Zionist, I'm not saying Jews. I need to be very clear about that. You have the people that have the Jewish faith, that is one thing. I have the Zionists, it's something different. They believe well, we're referring to... Oh, go ahead. I'm referring here to those who are using the Jewish faith as a cover to be able to control the world and uh, which is not the advantage of humanity let's just say this those people i mean the dark forces are known to infiltrate any faith any movement any political movement any color any races it doesn't matter they will go where they need to go so they can control manipulate and and bring you know the, and create the world that they want to see they, they want to see happening, which is, of course, the destruction of humanity at the end. These are the, this is an ex, the extreme extremist. I mean, that or um, there there is this kind of elitism that happens with religions, and it's it's across the board. It's not just one, it, where they they kind of you know either you join us or you're against us type of mentality. Yeah, and but, but, see that but, through Christianity, Muslims. Uh, and, and some of Judaism, and they exist in every group. I mean, yeah. you have the the P two lodge for the Christian. You have uh, the 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 Knot of Malta. You have different different groups in the Christian religion that are also extremists and have their own agenda that has nothing to do with most of the common folks going, I guess, to church on Sunday. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it, it's not. I just want to blame one faith or another here. I just want to talk about facts. And I, you know, I always encourage listener to check. To check those things and who really created the Zionist movement, what was really their real motivation, and how they hated Jews. This right. is the thing that's important. This is why in France, when they voted that law that to be anti-Semite, it's the same as being anti-Zionist. It's a joke. It's it's people were like, wait a minute, it's like black and white it has nothing to do with each other. Why, why is it the same? But right. of course. It's um, they play with the anti-Semit anti uh, situation to play the victim so they can have more control and more power. It's always the same thing. Yeah. But anyway, here, so why they burned the Talmud? Because they were uh, obviously considered at the time of the crusade. So they were, you know, uh, intense time. Uh, Christianity was very powerful at the time, going after everything that was not Christian. And again, uh, I'm not... I'm not <laughs> consenting to that thing, but this is what happened at that time. So I guess they were also considering 
for some of these Christian, I guess, you know, the Jewish were responsible for the death of, the, of, of Jesus Christ and, you know, all that. Yeah, yeah, that it, gets, it gets pretty murky because it's almost like there were so many involved in that, you know, and they blame the Romans, they blame the Jews. And, and you know, yeah. and, and on the other hand, you know, there was like a levels of antagonism too. And so you don't know if this was what what was really at play here in order to bring forth uh, this new religion called Christianity. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I mean, it, you, know, it you is, kind you of know. step back and you say, how, well, how in the world, you know, is uh, something like this? Or or the, the scene is set and there was some good intention and then um, it gets distorted by the followers. So there's, there's so many different things to look at, but... Um, there, there is a lot to look at. And, you know, we talk about the name of the game. Well, and one of the rules is no blame, no gain. That's pretty much one of those rules. You need to always blame something that you have done yourself, blame someone else, and you can have a control on the situation. It's a win-win right. for those who are doing that. Yeah, so it's, it's it like the puppet masters at play, and everyone yeah. becomes the pawn on the chessboard. Exactly. So here the, the, they start to understand that um, those who are going deeper than just listening to the news or some 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 yellow vests that have their own channel, most of them are saying, oh, well, you know, it's a Muslim and they're, they are, you know, they, they destroyed 800 and 50, 875 churches in one year and this and that. And it's a Muslim and the Muslim Muslim. OK. In the same time, you have mosques in the world that are destroyed. So it is very clear here, they only leave people in, you know, all these news, they invite people that will say, or, oh, wow, you know, it's the Muslim, obviously, that are behind that, or the Christian, never the third religion. And there are three main religions here, you know what I mean? So it's very interesting for me, I always ask myself the question, who will benefit from this? I observe the situation, yeah. see, see the results, and then, okay, who's benefiting from this? That's the question you have to ask. So, yeah, and the, who, who will bet? I guess that's one way to see who's behind the agenda because then you get to see who benefits in the end. Exactly. And, you know, it's almost like it reminds me of the um, Salem witch trials. And the Salem witch trials were not based necessarily on who was actually a witch, but it was very convenient for them to find a family that had um, appealing land and it, I, you know, I refer to it as a land grab opportunity because if they could prove that that person was committing a crime of some sort, then that person is no longer, um, uh, is, of, is, is no longer protected by the law so that they're either thrown in prison and then their family must forfeit the land. They don't leave the land with the people, they would take the land. And so that's the kind of thing that you need to look at is the outcome, what happens in the end. And here again, it's is it about religion or agenda of uh, certain groups that are behind the religions, you know, that use the yeah. religions. Absolutely. Them. It's a tool. It's a weapon. So it's, it's more of a weapon than we realize. Because I always say that people weaponize their belief system in order to halt someone, get a person to not say anything, and to uh, be able to acquire something that they need. Um, if anyone has questions them, then they, they throw this thrashing, you know, verbiage upon them, you know, as if they're, you know, condemned or whatever. And like you said, that rabbi saying, well, this is, you know, the uh, judgment upon the French people for burning the Talmuds and um, it's it's that you know the the jet the God the all-consuming God um, that you know you say that the, the people make comments about Shiva being the destroyer um, it sounds like there's other religions that are involved in the destroyer mentality you know because if someone touches it then you know there's going to be destruction there's going to be judgment there's going to be an apocalypse. There's going to be some retribution. 
and it's this lashing out and um, you know saying that our God, ours, you know, it's only our God, and you don't have a God or whatever your rights are no longer count anymore because it's our God and us. And so that kind of mentality is very dangerous because humanity is here um, on the planet together. And the agreement is, is if you're here, then you are on an equal level. And unless you can prove to me that you didn't enter into this planet in one way, you know, uh, through birth, and then you all, you know, you die without taking any of your belongings with you. It's essentially the same thing, you know. So if you're going through that process, then you are no greater or no less than anyone, any other human on the planet. Um, if you're an ET, then of course you have other abilities. But uh, the the religion has really skewed people's perspective of who they are, and also. Um, uh, judging other uh, religions and their gods or whatever, but to me, they all, you know, when, when you really listen and step back, they, they're all pretty much saying similar things, you know, especially this retribution type of thing or this judgmental, um, you know, destructive force that's going to come against them if, if anyone touches it. So, you know, sounds like it has some of the same roots and origins indeed. And well, well, we'll see how that happens. But anyhow, so the religion that, that affects the other religion that, you know, now you have a series of numbers, um, which makes me think of our matrix. And I know that some people, uh, even in, in my comments and some of the shows that I've done, have talked about the study of numbers. Uh, is it Gematria? Um, and, and yeah, I, yeah, and that's because, you know, they, they see it all, all as a construct and that you can sort of figure certain things out by the numbers, but I don't think that is a hundred percent, uh, foolproof. I think that there are definitely exceptions because we are not in a rigid construct. Uh, it's an ever moving construct. So in part it works and in part it doesn't. And that's why I know some people have been wanting to kind of, you know, leave links about it and do, do different things, um, make comments like this is the end all of all the information and, and that I'm, uh, some of the stuff we're talking about is not complete because we're not incorporating uh, that, that train of thought. Um, however, let those uh, people follow whatever it is that they believe and for me, um, I understand it. I, mean, I am seeing actual, uh, there's a series of numbers that are coming up for different things. And like you said, there's different interpretations depending on from what perspective and belief, belief system you come from. But um, so anyhow, the, but it, it, there's nothing, I mean, everything does add to the conversation and the numbers can add to the conversation. They are curious. But I don't want to be locked into anything. It's almost like a horoscope. I just just don't want to yes. feel exactly. like I, can, I I am going to manifest that reality because of what it says. You know that you know something's going to happen, and and then I actually kind of allow or create a scenario that that could take place, fulfilling that pro prophetic or you know that the claim of this is your destiny type of thing. And likewise, uh, numerology has kind of the same feel to me. Is if, if you get too deep into it, then you become bound to it. And, um, you know, that's something that we're trying to liberate ourselves, not get bound into any type of construct. So... Uh, no, and, and, and 777 is a number that we haven't really... Uh, I've seen that number several times throughout, you know, these last years, but I never really pay attention to it. But lately, we were working on different numbers like two, 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 eight, 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 you know, three, three. Uh, what was it? One, one, one. Um, so uh, it seems five, 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 two. Five, five, five. Absolutely. So 
I mean, for me, it's interesting to know that all these numbers are part of a teaching that seems to be very ancient, that this, I would say, the projection of, I would say, Zoroastrian, uh, Zoroastrian matrix and inorganic control system and belief system, that's, it's, it's like the, um, the babushkas, you know, realities within realities within realities. And what we see here to all these teachings in this dimension, I would say it's more the, the, the last, the, 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 the smaller part of it, the last, that is part of this circle, but then when you start breaking through and disentangling from, like you said, you don't want to be bunt to any of these beliefs because then you you fuel them and you, you make it happen. So you manifest them. So you need to, by, by this demanifesting, disentangling from them and just observing and going, literally going through it and see, see what's behind it, you can break through and then go to the next layer the next reality and then so on and so on and so on until you go you know we, we have a saying in um, saying in French but I will try to translate you know when you look for the truth it's um, uh, or, or you go to the different lies I would say more to see what's true the lies are like an octopus that has many different legs and each each legs have a tip right it, 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 it you know legs have, have a tips and what's happened was tentacles I would say have a tip so one of the tip might be, of course, you know, the whole situation with, for example, oh, well, you know, Notre Dame, take an example, they want to do it because they want to have, they have a real estate uh, project about that. Another one, another leg will be, well, well, as a Zionist that are definitely, you know, taking revenge for what happened uh, to 700 and 777 years ago. Another leg might be, oh, it's Macron that's definitely doing this because he wanted to discredit the Yellow Vest and make sure that the Yellow Vest maybe, you know, wouldn't dare to protest on that day. There are so many different legs you can, you can, you can see, but all you have to do really is to realize that each of these legs are not showing you the truth. You need to go to the very core, which is the body of that octopus and there is that that's where you can find literally the, the the core truth of what's really happening and, and and by removing all the veils of illusion and deception that create separation between these different um information you can find that look that look like they are not connected to each other but they are you just need to make sure to not get entangle with one or, or, or just focus on one and be blindsided. You need to pretty much, it's like looking at a picture when, you know, putting the picture on your nose, you won't see a lot of details. Take a few steps backward and look at it. Now you will have a different perspective that will be more whole. And in this situation, I saw all these different information when I was going to these different channels and I could see some people going to really the trap of, oh, as the Muslim, as the really, you know, they're pushing the war between Muslims and Christian. Others were going in a little bit deeper and say, hey, let's go a little bit into the, the, the numbers and see what's going on there. And they discovered now, well, there is definitely, definitely another type of information, another layer. And then those who go a little deeper realize, oh, wait a minute, this is connected to all the Freemasons that are differently since 18, since 1789, literally took power in France and start to organize all these revolution and the French constitution, as well as the, the American constitution have been written by these Freemason lodges. Now, who is behind it? Well, now we discover that some of then I've discovered that there is a large, that's a specific, supposedly non uh, uh, forbidden to non-Jewish, it's a Jewish lodge, and that is pretty much controlling in France, at least, all the other lodges. So there are layers behind layers behind layers. But for, I mean, for me, at the end of the day, it all leads to Orzoraster, uh, Dionysus, Michael, uh, and... Uh, I mean, the, 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 the alliance of evil there. Yeah, what are you talking about? If you're looking at what's going on in the astral, then yep. you can kind of track it down. I mean, you know, I, I can even look and, and and see where a lot of it's coming from. And that we, we were actually looking at the uh, Champs-Élysées. I don't know if we talked about this in any of the shows, but we were talking about it privately. No, we and didn't. How, how that it was the Elysium Fields. The Elysium Fields 
were supposed to be like a um, sort of like a, a heaven or a reward location that was supposed to be for um, uh, was it the uh, Greek the Greek yeah. warriors for the and warrior, yeah, yeah so, well yeah those that have you know served um, in and helped to protect Greece and so this that that actual reality was then taken from Greece to, by Dionysus and placed right there in the middle of France and so what they were doing was very strange they were literally he was using that space and actually torturing some of those um, warriors in who in some way may even you know had an afterlife there and then incarnated um, but I had a few people contact me saying that they were having these like really weird visions and I traced it back to this very um, location which was very polluted by Dionysus who then placed that there in France it was perverse and it was very odd and I know that that's not the way it was originally so you have these overlays of realities that are impacting uh, different things and I know that I was I was looking up about uh, Paris and how people get traumatized because they were like they were going there saying that this is this is supposed to be this place of romance and love and and you know they weren't feeling that at all and to the point where I think even Japan had a hotline for people that were disappointed about going to to Paris and it was it was kind of a, like a weird thing and you wonder why it was because of these strange overlays that are there that at one time it was a beautiful place but then others started uh, introducing different energies and so you have a distortion and then um, obviously a disconnect and then oppression and so it's a series it doesn't just happen overnight where there is a problem and whatever the energy is because everything has to happen dimensionally first you know as it is above so it is below if you want to use uh, that context to help you understand it that's what they meant it happens somewhere first energetically so um, you know you're bringing this introducing a space uh, that is perpetuating or creating new problems and in one case it's the perpetuating of like Les Miserables you know you have all of these um, people like it's like a French Revolution that keeps playing out throughout history after you know certain you know a hundred years two hundred years and then you know you go through it again and so um, that isn't supposed to be happening it's that that scenario where people are being oppressed constantly that pushes them to that extreme where they feel and manifest the need to have to um, you know take over and not surrender because they're feeling squeezed and, and everything's being pulled from them and so um, that the, the memory um, can trigger many of those people could have even incarnated again in the space and I know that we're really really dissecting this in a way but it's it's important for people to understand the things in, that happen in different locations and regions and whatever you see like some kind of um, you know pattern that keeps playing through then that's something that that you know um, needs to be you know resolved it needs to be healed and, and not played out any further and so but there's other things that are introduced there that were not present before and this is the type of stuff that I think is important is the new plans uh, almost trying to revise and shift the energy of the French people instead of seeing them in harmony and and thriving and also a beautiful place for people to go and visit they're actually trying to shift it and change it in another way now we've talked about the whole concept of it being in New Jerusalem and you introduced that that information from what you've been researching yeah and it was confirmed again that the New Jerusalem is Paris and so some of these you know some of these guys um, were saying that what's happening really is that it's pretty much moving energetically 
the core point uh, of Jerusalem into into Paris, meaning into France, which would be the center of so the, the, the power power place where um, Christianity has started a long time ago. It didn't start from the Vatican as people think it is. It started with the Franks when they co they, they came and invaded from from the east of Europe. They invaded with uh, I think it was Clovis the first one. I'm not sure. I might I might have some French people <laughs> getting now. But I don't remember. You know, it's like a long time ago. But uh, since I have a lot of issues with with Clovis, I remember this one particularly. But mainly Charlemagne is the first that called himself an emperor, and he was crowned on that very place where Notre Dame was built. Is even the one that, even if it was built in the 1100th uh, century, the first stone literally was uh, placed by Charlemagne at that time. Not a lot of people know that, which was also the uh, temple, was it for Jupiter, right? A pagan Jupiter temple? That's correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So they're saying this is a telluric place, a telluric center, an energetic center of France that is very important. And when you take control of that place, you can, of that specific point, you can literally use that energy for your own uh, agenda. So you had the fake Jupiter at that time that it's, you know, had that temple there. Then Charlemagne came later on and installed his first stone there. It was not the cathedral as it is now, but it is where he got crowned. And what, why Charlemagne is so important in this story here is because he's the one that literally gave power again to a dying um, Christian religion in Rome after the fall of the empire, the Roman Empire. For a, a few centuries, uh, they were pretty weak. Um, they lost the whole control on Europe at that time. Um, Charlemagne being so powerful and have literally invaded whole Europe and it will create a whole empire by merging and um, with the Christian religion. What he did is he literally spread it all over the, uh, Europe, starting from France, so that very core center where the, 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 the Notre Dame burnt. So it's very symbolic here. Um, it's pretty much destroying the whole core of what started the, 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 the Christian religion in the world because it started from France, spread out into Europe, Spain, Portugal. Those countries start to invade other, other continents and spread out the Christian religion into South America and other places in the world. So if you think about all this under that perspective, under the, that, that light, it seems to be interesting how they have targeted that very spot, um, you know, a month and a half ago. Now, when I say New Jerusalem, when you see what's happening, and, and this is just politics here, but what's happening in Israel right now was, you know, between the Palestinians and and uh, Israelian, some might say, well, it's not very fair that some of these human beings are kept in camps, literally, like they did the same thing in some, like so, some historians were saying that, you know, it's the same thing that happened in Bar in um, uh, Varsovia in Poland in 39, the same thing. So, but now roles are reversed. And what's happening is <clears throat> that, by, by moving away to France, um, energetically, pretty much the center of uh, you know, Jerusalem into France, it is also shown in two different ways. Um, when you look at France these last, I would say, uh, 40 years, it is not something that happened in one day. It's a plan that they have in mind for a very long time, and they they are very patient and it started in 1970, I think it was 73, where um, Pompidou, the president Pompidou of France, which is also an ex-banker of the Rothschild family, the Rothschild Bank, made an agreement with the Rothschild family that um, the Bank of France was not able to produce money anymore and pay for the debt of France, that now the debt of France will belong 
to other banks outside of France, most of the time in the US and so on, Goldman Sachs and so on, right? So that means at that point, French, the French people didn't own their money anymore, didn't own, they, they were not able to, I mean, they were owing money to a bank that was not French, that was somewhere else in another continent, part of the whole Rothschild network. And it's literally 2,500 euro a second of debt, of interest. So now, I mean, the debt is, is, is huge and they cannot even pay off their own debt. See what I mean? So that is, again, one of the reasons why the France, France lost this uh, as, as, as sovereignty not lately in 70s. And from there, all the other uh, presidents came after who were always, um, had always one person around them. And his name is Jacques Attali. Jacques Attali is also part of that same Zionist movement that literally manage, control each president one after another. He's the one that also, by the way, met Macron when he was 20 years old and asked Macron, what would you like to do in the future? He was, he was freshly coming out of college, extremely brilliant um, student. Well, he failed three times his exam, but he was obviously, you know, he never let go. He pushed, pushed, pushed until he, he succeeded. And he told him, hey, what do you want? What do you want to do with your life? And Macron says, I want to be king. I know it's a republic, but I want to be the new king of France, of the French Republic. And 20 years later, here we go. Here he is. Well, behind that guy... Uh, uh, Macron, obviously, and I will go into that in a minute. Just remind me to talk about that situation with Macron now. I just want to, I don't want to let go of the conversation we had about France and uh, the New Jerusalem. It seems that um, the Zionist movement have literally infiltrated, which is their motto, by the way, is infiltration. You need to infiltrate every group, every religion, every political party. It doesn't matter what it is. Infiltrate, infiltrate, infiltrate. That's the only way to take control. And they are deeply, deeply controlling every single part of the French government, the, 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 the finances, the, 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 the Department of Defense. I mean, it's <laughs> television. Most of the people that are white, 50 years old and white, that are not of, uh, that are from a different faith of the Jewish faith are all fired and all, I mean, it's, uh, and, and people might say, well, Chris, you're racist here. No, it's just an observation. It's just an observation. Everybody can, you know, have their own conclusion. But like one guy said, they are doing everything to push people to, in reaction, start to have hatred towards the Jewish faith, which of course has nothing to do with what's happening here. It's a darker and way older uh, a group that is using that situation of hate between, you know, French people and that are anti-Semite, it's simply because they make it so obvious, it's pretty much done on purpose. So French people, without having the knowledge what's going behind it, will automatically go to the conclusion that the Jewish people are the problem. Understand? And it's way deeper than that. So why they are, and, and this is why the next elections will be very important. Now, but to go back into history, Notre Dame is way more than just the center, the zero point of France, meaning every road starts from there. It's the heart of France. It's where literally the fake Jupiter and then, you know, the whole control system was anchored. And then after that, Charlemagne, that expanded, reinforced the religion, the Christian religion, and gave, I would say like a fire that's dying, gave some oxygen and became stronger. And from there, never left power. So the fact that they hit the church is, or the cathedral is hitting a symbol, pretty much saying, well, we need to destroy the Christian religion. We need to destroy they, they, not we, they need to destroy the Christian religion. They need to destroy the Muslim religion. I don't know about the Jewish one, what's going on there, but they have a goal to create one religion for the world. And one government and one bank and da, 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 da. We we'll know the whole thing, right? We know the spiel. So, yeah, I mean, it, uh, France is literally an extension of the, of, of, 
yeah, Zionist uh, control system, which again has nothing to do with the Jewish faith. So, um, it's a lot, and, it's a and lot well, if, if it if it is if they're trying to create, um, they're calling Paris the New Jerusalem, which throws everyone off because everyone has their eyes on Israel. And if if the uh, New World Order is looking at at France, then then they're kind of setting this up, and that even in some ways, like you said, they initiated the yellow vest movement i don't think it's gone in the direction they wanted it to go but initially they were talking about the yellow vest movement before it even happened so they it know is. that if they can break down the nation then it's open for a rebuild and that's exactly. the, not just the political religious um social structure of everything and even the population how the population plays out um, I know that like China has has arranged for these you know special cities that that are barren right now, but uh, will be f utilized for some specific purpose. And the U.S. has um, probably you know their FEMA camps. So there's there's you know initiations for some type of you know kind of a mud flood scenario of regrouping, resetting. To introduce a new new uh, world order, uh, which is probably brought in every time that those that are already in power feel that they're losing power, or that there is an even distribution of things happening, so they have to, you know, either depopulate or then bring in um, a scenario where everything flows back to them again, because they're not happy. Um, you know, there's not enough. You can have everything in the world, and in 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 these beings, these these uh, humans that are used, um, seem to have like uh, an ins insatiable desire for being in control and having power and money that they're never fulfilled. It's it's they never have everything that they want. So, um, and now they keep on doing it and keep on doing it and keep on doing it. And uh, those, you know, they, these are the, the very high powers. And some of them are public, some of them will never be public. You won't even know their names. You won't know who they are. You'll think that you know the, who they are, but you don't know who they are because they don't show themselves, but they have a desire and thirst for power and money in a way that you can't even imagine. And, um, uh, also, the beings behind it, wanting to harness humanity um, in in some in in the slave system, which makes them feel empowered and, and gives them the ability to do whatever they want here on the planet. So, uh, keep humans dumb and and uninformed, and allow this you know everything else to kind of play out the way that they want to. So, if if the eyes are all looking in Israel for the New Jerusalem, for those Christian hopefuls uh, that want to see, they think they want to see an apocalyptic event, or they think they want, you know, this whole thing to play out with the Antichrist. Um, of course, the they will they will be accommodated with this, um, you know, elaborate display of something, and and then the energy shifts over to France. They don't know that yet. Uh, and when they see it, they'll say, well, this is what we've been waiting for. Now we know where everyone's going to get destroyed, except for us, because we're the, we're the chosen, or we've been faithful, or we've been something, you know, and then wait, waiting for the rapture, waiting for this and that to happen, um, and, and, and then others, you know, fulfilling their, you know, divine, you know, intervention of something that's supposed to happen. It's, it's very it's 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 a hard thing to watch. It's it's hard, um, uh, because of of how that they're accommodating the belief system to play out in a way, and they've done this before. And it's as long as these uh, books have been written, you know, whether it's the Bible or some other 
writing uh, revelations, as long as it's been written, it's been going on for years, where they keep on playing it out over and over and over again in different different ways. Um, I, I just recently saw something on the news, and, and maybe I'll, uh, well, not in the news, but uh, someone posted on YouTube regarding a really weird event, uh, what, or it looks like there's some kind of strange thing in the sky in Nevada, and, and that's just current. And it looks like this really weird, like, line in the shift in color that's abnormal, as well as, like, some kind of beam of light coming down that is very strange looking. It's very large and thick and definitely not, like, a lightning bolt. And um, the first thing you see is, oh, you know, be prepared, and, and the, those who will be saved are, you know, there's, there's all these scriptures there, and it's like, Wow, you know it's it's just hard to watch. Um, if if we're awakened and open to being willing to see through what the agendas are, we can have a whole different approach rather than a fear or a subservience, which they want. You know, kind of the the sheeple scenario. If we open our eyes and we're more attuned to what's going on. And keeping ourselves attuned by listening and seeing, you know, we're not just saying like fabricated news, but, you know, some things that are people, that regular people are just posting and saying, hey, this is really weird in the sky. Does anyone know what this is? And, you know, kind of interfacing with each other and, 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 and being on top of all of it. And so it's so that we're not uh, fulfilling whatever it is that they want us to fulfill and not to be in fear. And also knowing that whatever is happening, um, that we're going to ask that it all be revealed, that the veils be lifted, and that they can't hide anymore. They can't play this out anymore. And that humans will never allow it to, allow it to happen again. Um, I've talked to uh, Rodan plenty of times about how humanity is in a s situation where they're, you know, they have to be a part of the galactic community because of the galactic community is very active on the earth and sees humans as uninformed and not capable of having the knowledge and the ability for certain things because of that, you know, when we say it gets into wrong hands, well, you know, in, in an ideal situation, we can have technology without blowing ourselves up. I mean, it's the same as that. You know, you you don't give fire to a child because the child will burn themselves. Essentially, that's how we're perceived. It's because we can't handle the simple, basic ability of taking that information and then converting it for a useful purpose. And instead, it has to go into some kind of weaponry, or it always goes into the hand of someone that, that has some kind of, you know, distorted um, mentality um, and, and can only think of, of their inflated power. So when that gets corrected, um, then we're able to access more things. So, so we need to, part of that's going to happen is our consciousness has to open up. And it's not, you know, just like we, we say that we love and and love and light and and we forgive everyone and I mean those are basic things I mean just like full awareness and inner knowing and in all sorts of um, awakening and awakening is not just you know this this just the blissful stuff but having the knowledge and understanding of what's going on around us in the world so um you know I know that I'm preaching to the choir because the people that listen already know but for those of you that are that are just learning right now, um, keeping our eyes open, learning, and there's more than one person that's putting information out there. Some of it, you know, you have to filter through some. Some of it's still carrying the weight of the the old paradigms in it, you know, the the old belief systems. But then they have some partial truths. So if you can able to sift through that and understand and recognize, oh yeah, I remember that from you know this teaching or that teaching that's, you know, religious-based, 
but then the other information of, of disclosure, but never to be in fear. And if they're promoting fear in the process, um, that's, that's, it should be awareness, not fear. And so um, with, with the people of France, and, and we're using um, uh, the, the French uh, um, scenario here regarding uh, what's going on in, globally, uh, because it's a, it's a perfect example, and, and any nation can be in that situation. It's not just them. And it's not just because of their perpetuating some of the stuff, but they're able to play off of that. But I think we need to send positive um, energy to the people of France, help them to rise up and and uh, create um, a bubble of protection around them. So, um, you know, elderly people are not getting hurt, or, you know, uh, blue collar workers are not getting hurt. Uh, young kids are not getting arrested. Women are not getting uh, dragged down the street with their by their hair. You know, just like caveman mentality. It's it's very obvious. The consciousness is so low there. Um, so we need to shift that energy, pull them out of this two uh, D scenario, and and bring them back in to a, a place where you know this this it is an all Draco and and it, it's kind of. Um, more um, elevated in in a sense of that the people that are speaking are being heard again, not treated very cruelly. So uh, sending that energy and when when that energy shifts, um, it will eliminate this whole uh, New Jerusalem concept or whatever else that they're trying to play out over there, and then uh, something will happen regarding the government where the people will actually um, get a, a better footing and a restoration of, of their land because they worked hard for their land, they've supported the land. And um, from my point of view, and I've traveled throughout Europe and I've traveled in France, and they they do love the earth. They, they It's beautiful, it's absolutely breathtaking there. And uh, some things need to be changed. Their, their um, uh, re reliance on some of the nuclear power plants need to be removed. Uh, but aside from that, it's, it's a wonderful um, uh, setting. Uh, and I think that uh, it, should, it should be returned back. So I don't know if someone did, a, did an alternate reality and just shifted that that nation into some kind of nightmare but I think that needs to be shifted back I think the rest of the earth will feel it as well remember we're all interconnected and uh, it's I know that I uh, other people have posted about other nations that were horribly ravaged and and destroyed like Syria and some others we understand that and we also understand we don't want you know, Israel to be destroyed or anything like that. We just, we, I think we just want everyone to be sensible and, and uh, raising in the consciousness. Um, those that keep on talking about how that they're right and their religion and this and that seem to have the lowest consciousness these days. And they're, they're kind of settling in and that it doesn't make any sense at all as you observe it. So it needs to, we need to uh, shut down the program delete it, remove it, uninstall it, and uh, anything that is obstructing humanity from awakening and also um, sending them protection in the process. So, uh, that was perfect. <laughs> that was great. It's exactly that because I wanted to explain something about what's going on with Macron right now. Okay. Based on the on, on some information I've, I've seen through different channels, they all have the same type of information that those who put Macron in place as a puppet, even if we know that he is definitely connected to Dionysus, but it's one of the aspects of Dionysus as many others. Um, well, obviously, I'm not very happy with him because it didn't go as deep into the agenda as it was supposed to. He, once he was in place, he started to feel like the king, that, you know, 
<laughs> is all there, and therefore start to make some decisions that they didn't like. So now they are pretty much it, it's done for them. He's done. They know he's done. He knows it too. He's trying to just you know make sure that he can maybe finish his term of three next years. But it says that it, it said that obviously they they will not terminate him directly, but they will eventually push for him to resign within this year because they just need a little time to put in place the next uh, candidate. And here is what's interesting. I thought about that guy, Jacques Attali, which is the whisper the wisdom, supposedly, to each president for the last four of them, and the one that literally put um, Macron in place. Uh, in an interview not long time ago, is before Macron, he said, well, first Macron will be president, but after Macron, it will be a young woman. So they already know what's going to happen and who's going to be the next uh, the next peon or puppet they're going to put in place. And here is why, in the very beginning, the very first show, I said the Yellow Vest is a movement that has been created, literally pushed by pushing the tax to a point where people couldn't, 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 couldn't take it anymore. And someone suggested that the Yellow Vest as a symbol that someone was working with the Macron government, by the way, everybody embraced it thinking, oh, well, yeah, that's a symbol of, you know, when on the side of the road, you're in danger, you want to be visible, you want to be heard, you want to be seen, you put a Yellow Vest, right? So it's a great symbol for our uh, demands. Well, as, I, as I've said earlier, it was in the cover on the cover of The Economist in 2017, five months before Macron election. They have a picture there. You see these cards with the yellow vest protesting for the very thing they start to protest uh, maybe eight months later. So all that was orchestrated. So they wanted the yellow vest to go to a point that will create a, a, a breaking point where Macron might maybe resign because people are misled thinking that by removing Macron is removing the problem. They literally have focused all their anger and uh, on the, that system that's controlling them and oppressing them as Macron. He is the one. So if we remove him, we're going to have plenty of space to finally do the things we want to do, which is, for example, uh, Lorique, which is the... Um, the citizen initi initiative referendum, meaning that instead of to have a few representatives that lie to their teeth to get elected and once they're in power for five years continued, you know, literally what the other administration was doing, even if it was maybe conservative or Republican or, or, or Democrat, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter the, the label they have, they continue the job, there's, you know, the, the plan of this dark forces, I call it. So now they they know that Macron is done. So that part of the job is done. Yellow vest had happened. They have used the yellow vest and all, you know, and discredit them in any way possible by uh, literally having the black bloc infiltrating the yellow vest, breaking things, having the cameras there of the news, you know, all the news channels to only show that so they can discredit the yellow vest because it's, it's like a horse, a wild horse. You need to still control it. You don't want to let it go fully. So that's what they did. They were um, enticing the anger to the black blocks, right? By letting, do, letting them do their uh, exactions and violence against the police. Let the police in the same time be victimized by the bad yellow vest, which had nothing to do with the black blocks. Then the police start to be extremely violent as an answer, which is great. Remember, they louche. They love violence and anger and fear. They louche from that. It's a wonderful, wonderful source of food for them. This, the third thing is they have used that to bring laws that were anti, uh, anti freedom, literally where now you can be jailed for suspicion that you might eventually have an intention to do something in the future, right? Uh, this is crazy. This is sci-fi right here. And they even go further than that now. 
they they even consider that if you're yellow vest, well, I'm going to I'm going to talk about that in a second. So otherwise, I will not be able to follow what I'm saying here. So Macron is definitely done. They know it now. Like Attali was saying, that uh, Jacques Attali was saying that there is a, a young girl that will be followed after that. Well, that young girl is the niece of Marine Le Pen. Marine Le Pen is supposedly the one that all the medias are pushing. She's the one that was in the last tour, the, the, the second tour of the election, when Macron was elected, she's the one that he was fighting with. She represents supposedly the populists, the people that are um, more like right wing, all about France, the roots, you know, no immigrants, close all the border, the French franc, you know, the, the, the money, the French currency, you know, go back to the old roots of France. Well, that's a lie too. She's not. She's hand in hand, again, with that same group that is connected to the New Jerusalem. She's hand in hand with them. She's prepared. She, she, she knew she would lose. She was accepted. The game was set pretty much. She would lose at the election and will be um, uh, pushed uh, after Macron lost. She will be the one that will eventually uh, win the uh, European election. And she's, by the way, uh, she's ahead in France for the European election. She's the one that's going to win pretty much the European election for France. It's known. But she has a niece. That niece was sent to college by that very same group that Atali is part of, connected to that whole, let's call it the New Jerusalem one, that paid her college and literally groomed her to become the next new president. She's young, she's a woman. She will talk about, of course, um, the France belongs to the French people, blah, 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 blah. And they make alliances with Salvini, which is the Italian version of it that, you know, got elected uh, a year or two ago as well. It's kicking all the immigrants out and everybody think, oh, wow, they're protecting, you know, our country, our roots. It's amazing. Nope, that's another trap. So they create the problem, wait for the reaction, which is the yellow vest, use that reaction, control it to set in place, you know, some violence so they can put some laws anti anti freedom against civil rights and human rights. But it doesn't matter. They slowly move towards the last part of the game, which is full dictature. Full dictature. I mean, it's it's that's really the goal. Absolute control on everything, your freedom, the press, everything. And of course, they need to wait for the reaction of the people, which is, oh, we want something so different, someone that suddenly, you know, will really um, uh, respect and, and, and answer to our demands of freedom and, and sovereignty of the country. Well, there again, it's another trap. So it's very important that the French, um, the, the <coughs> French brothers and sisters over there, and not just in France, uh, in whole Europe, understand that all those are games that are set in place for a very long time. They're just moving the peons like a chess game, step by step, move by move, in the direction they want. And the Yellow Vest need to understand is not going after Macron that's going to solve the problem. They need to go after the system, the system that's behind it. They need to understand what is the root of, of the problem here. Macron is just a peon. Right, right. Yeah, because he's, he's, yeah, he's a figurehead. Yeah. yeah. The, he's and a figurehead. Dine, I, you know, I was talking, I was having that conversation with myself. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so Pierre Macron is Dionysus. And suddenly I heard myself, I guess, do you think Dionysus has only Macron as an aspect of right. himself? <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's right. Never yeah, thought about that. Many. There's many. Exactly the same thing again. So the next, the next girl or whoever is going to be the next candidate might be another expression of of, of that. Yeah, because he has absolutely no problem being a female. So, as much as there are some groups that are going after Dionysus, Michael, and all these guys on the on the level of you know in France, of course, um, they might not know really to the, that extent what's going on. But it is important to understand that there's a whole cabal going on on the Freemason level and behind that controlled by 
a certain certain group or lodge, I would say, of Freemason that's connected to the New Jerusalem, and those one connected to the Rothschild, and the Rothschild behind the Rothschild is another group that nobody talks about, nobody ever, and I know they exist. It's part of the black nobility families yeah. most of the time in Italy. And behind that, there is something. And then you go into the astral and then, you know, high in dimension. Then you can see the Michael and Dionysus and and Bellatrix and all these different players that have different aspects of themselves, having fun playing with, um, with illusions and magic yeah. and <laughs> deceptions. This is why it's important what you said, Jess. It's yeah. about time yeah, to remove all the layers of deception, illusion, so they have they have no way to hide. They will have to show who they truly are. Well, they, so they just, they you know, they, are. They, they just recently removed uh, Cyrus, who was, uh, you know, also called Pan. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's the Persian Empire. You know, the part of the Persian Empire that, um, uh, you know, has... I mean, of course, he existed even before that, but that that's another aspect of what is being lifted from this planet. These are very, very old beings um, oh, yeah. existing way before the Earth was here, or at least uh, humanity. And so, um, but I, I just want to add, uh, recently I did a regression with someone and I was literally surprised because Marie Le Pen came up because it, um, one of her friends looks strikingly like Marie Le Pen, which uh, works very well with the whole concept of what Monarch is doing and, and um, you know, kind of creating clones and so forth. And I believe this woman is the original and Marie Le Pen is the clone. And so then, you know, they're very malleable. See, they work really, really well for agendas. And so... Um, that just recently, yeah, and I was thinking of sharing that with the public uh, with permission. I think it would be very helpful because then it takes another twist and turn on um, what they're trying to do. And this is, you know, coming up um, from a regression where she's just retrieving memories and, and insights as to what's going on and what um, she might have experienced. Uh, related to some of the monarch agendas. So now we see monarch being pulled into this uh, monarch uh, corporation. We see them being pulled into this, um, or at least put the spotlight on what their take is on it. And very likely they're, they're one of the chess players in the game. So um, yeah, that's something that needs to be introduced but this uh female um doesn't play out with the whole scenario with the christ antichrist agenda so it would very likely be a male if if you're playing that game so even though they might have this girl earmarked um if they wanted to actually roll out something else and that she could actually be a decoy for what they want to do she could because the others all the other the other contenders are all high master of Freemason lodges. All of them. Not right. a single one is not connected to the Freemason. So it may look like, you know, she's the candidate and the one that they want to put out there. But I I think that, that there's they're hiding the powerhouse somewhere else. And that's someone that's yeah, probably yeah. going to step in with some kind of... Good point supernatural uh, ability of some some sort you know um, some high level magician or, or uh, you know possessed possessed individual or something um, you know who's who's willing to wow. to do whatever and has absolutely zero conscious conscience regarding humanity similar to Macron seems to fit that role too he doesn't seem to have a conscience. No, no, and, and and it's interesting you say that because there is one guy that came, um, that's the, the Julian Assange, one of the lawyers of Julian Assange, his name is Juan Branco, Juan Branco, and he's French, and he was part of that whole, you know, a lady's family, he went to the same school where uh, Macron went, it's called ENA, and uh, E-N-A, 
it's pretty much the school where all the politician goes. You pretty much, they all come from there if you want to ever go, you know, to the higher, the higher spheres and the high level of politics. They teach you literally to lie, to manipulate, and, and, and they, they literally groom you to be part of the system. So, you know, you don't, you don't become elected, to, so then you start destroying the system. They want to make sure that whoever is going to be in the government will continue, you know, um, nourishing the system that's in place. He went to that school and then he became a lawyer in one year, one year. He, took five, he did five years of college in one year, became a, a lawyer. I mean, that kid is very clever. Now, he came into the Yellow Vest movement as supposedly, okay, I am, uh, he wrote several books where he literally um, described how the whole system of the French government is all connected to, uh, it's literally a mafia that have never, ever, ever had any interest for the French people and explain everything. He says, you know, I was part of them. I've seen it. I don't like it. So now I'm going for the yellow vest and everybody likes him. Here is a catch. Who was his godfather? Jacques Attali. <laughs> Same guy. And when, when he's talking, you see in the office, you see a, 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 a painting from Dali. When you see goats, you see children being burned. I mean, like a horrible thing, a horrible scene. That's that's his painting right there. So they were saying, well, we discovered that that guy is infiltrated from that same, you know, New, New Jerusalem group, is infiltrated in the Yellow Vest because what he's saying is that the only problem is Macron and the system that Macron represents. Is saying there is no such thing as Freemasons, as Rothschild. It, it is not, absolutely not the problem in France. The problem is Macron. So it was literally sent them to distract the Yellow Vest, focus with his book that supposedly is de right. denouncing Macron and his whole nasty system. It's a system. propaganda. Yeah. It's a propaganda. And, and right. you should see that any and other who books. Is, who is his grandfather? What we call the Godfather. It's like the one that pushed him politically. Jacques Attali. That's okay. okay, that's and he's the godfather Attali. of. Okay. Yeah, the guy that was behind. Uh, it started with President Mitterrand, then President mm -hmm. Chirac. He was with President Chirac, Attali. Then he went with the next one, which is um, Sarkozy. Sarkozy literally uh, uh, removed a law of uh, treason, the law of treason that if any French people are doing anything that will be against the, the French Republic, it will be high treason. He removed that law. So when that was done, they were all relaxed and okay. Didn't matter what they did anymore. Then you have President Holland. That was just the one before uh, Macron and then Macron. So that guy is literally behind every single president. And we call, you know, it's like you have the, um, the horse whispers. Well, it's the president whispers, literally controlling them and making sure they keep them in check. And uh, he's not the only one. You have BHL, Bernard Henri Lévy, which is supposedly a philosopher that everybody's scared to death. That guy wrote a few books. He's, a, he's, he's, he's an idiot, but very dangerous. He's the one that went to Ukraine to push for the people in Ukraine to create their war. That, of course, it, everywhere he goes, after that, there are thousands and thousands of deaths. Oh my gosh. So, what oh is yeah. his name? Bernard, Bernard, Henry, Levi. Wow. Okay. I Remember mean, that name, everyone. <laughs> I mean, it, and, and, and it's a guy so powerful as a philosopher that if, for example, he's invited on a, you know, some news channel and, uh, you know, for a dialogue, he will ask who is the other guest. If there is another guest that he doesn't like or might not like him or knows about what he's doing, it will literally... He has so much power, he can literally say, I don't want that guest, I want that guest, I don't want that program to go through. I mean, it's very powerful. Those people are very powerful in France. Yeah. And and it, it's, when I see that, I mean, it drives me crazy. But I guarantee everyone's going to forget his name. <laughs> oh, no. Because oh. they do this like automatic mind wipe, you know. Oh, so nobody forgets his name in something. France. In France, yeah. everybody hates his guts. Well, yeah, he's, it sounds like he's, um, you know, the, the destructive force and, and the poison. 
Oh yeah, now it's going yeah. everywhere in the world for the people. Fight for your freedom. You need to be free. Fight for freedom. You deserve your sovereignty. But when it comes to France, I don't know. Yellow vests are teaseless. They are ignorant. They cannot read. They cannot write. They are stupid. They are idiots. Like, wait a minute. Why does it work for other countries but not for ours? Right. <laughs> because they they're trying to overthrow the certain governments and other ones they want. Yeah. Yeah. And so again, it has nothing to do with religion here. I mean, um, I'm, uh, I couldn't care less, but it's about this power in place. Always the same mm -hmm. players. But yeah. you wanted to say something. I'm sorry I interrupted you. No, no, I was I was just adding to the conversation. So, uh, Chris, let's uh, maybe we can um, kind of wrap it up. Wrap it up a bit. Yeah, I was yeah. looking for the right word. <laughs> For once, I have the right word. <laughs> <laughs> I no, I think it's a lot of information. I guess more will come as we go. But um, I guess what was interesting to to bring that information so people can look at different things online. And, and of course, you know, I encourage everyone to, to make their own research and to not just listen to what we say. What, what, what we want to do here is just to bring some, some points of, point of discussion. So... We can open up, you know, everybody's uh, perspective and then right. see from there. Everybody will find their own thing, but it's important. Yeah, to give, to give everyone, you know, uh, um, something to think about. And yes. then I'm sure there's more to be added from there. But um, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I just want to say thank you for joining us today, Chris. Oh, and my pleasure. Thanks for the update. And we continue to keep informed absolutely keep, keep awake and let's keep connected have a good Thank day you everyone so much. bye 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 you have been listening to androna talks radio join us on youtube channel jessica errol morocco and visit her website at www.readingsbyarial.com.